All right, what's going on, guys? So um, I'm going to do a live binary session um, on this US crude pair. Now, I just actually tested this uh, strategy uh, and, and market analysis on demo that I learned from uh, my cousin Sunday. And I actually just popped it on two trades off of this candle here based off of this markup of strategy. So I'm going to actually give you guys a little bit of a rundown of exactly how I mark up my charts now. I kind of do it in a new way. It's basically locating zones as applying demand and market structure, and then using EMAs to get sniper entries. Okay. So the first thing I do is um, I zoom out on the 15 minute and I take uh, a vertical line and I look at current prices here and then I try to go back as far as possible and place the vertical line. So I'll place the vertical line probably, let's just say right here. Maybe right here off of this blue candle up here on um, the wick, okay? Then the next, very next thing I do is I start drawing horizontal lines and then drawing supply demand zones off of those lines. So I start from the, from the bottom to the top. So it's almost like we're building a house, like we've always talked about. So this is the lowest point here. So we want to draw a zone off of that, okay? This is very simple because this is going to help us to figure out what price did in the past and more likely what it's going to do in the future based off of respect and support and resistance, okay? So we want to do it like this, okay? So that's the first one. Now let's look for the next one. And you see that there's a whole bunch of wicks here right here. So we're going to put the horizontal line off of the body of this uh, or this candle here. And then you're going to draw a zone there. Okay. So make it nice and clean so it doesn't get too cluttered. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to locate the next lowest point. Okay. So when I see the next lowest point, um, well, we're not the next lowest point. We, we, we'll see what price is either resisting or supporting. So kind of see it up here. See a lot of weak action here where we resisting and drop down. So we can put it up here, body to body, okay? Okay. We have prices interacting the zone that made it drop. So you see that. Now we're going to find the next highest, uh, the higher low point. And I always look out for the wicks. Now, now so this is probably the proper uh, one here. You see how price interacting with the zone, you see a wick here, but the price interacting with the zone as resistance and then as support here. So this is a proper zone. And if you draw these horizontal lines and zones correctly, you're going to see it. You want to see exactly when price interacts with their zones and when it came back to those same zones. So I'll give you an example so you guys can understand. So with this zone we just drew, right? Price interacted with this same zone right here, which made price drop. Okay. Now, eventually price came back up to this same zone, okay? So you look over here, price came back up to this zone, just like it did here, right? But in this example, price resisted and then dropped. It didn't close above, it faked out and dropped. But this time when price came up, it didn't resist, it broke through and retested its zone and went up. So price always comes back to the same zones eventually. And it helps you to get a better of a story of what price is going to, current price is going to do. Okay. Because the market can be in one way predictable as far as how it interacts with zones. So that's a good zone to draw. So now we're going to draw the next one. And what is the very next point here? We see it right here with all the bunch of these wicks here. So we're going to capture the body. 
for another zone. Okay. Okay, we're going to take another horizontal line. We're going to go to the very next uh, level. And from what I can see, I see it here, right where this width is here. Okay. And, and we know we're correct because when we basically draw this, um, every, and, and this is, and, and we're going, this is going to be our supply zone, so I'm actually going to make this red. And we can see that, that we do this correctly because I stay um, rejecting the zone, even though it, it, it went up, but it faked out. It never closed above or, or retested or tested this uh, zone. Like, like when you look at price here, price went up and then it closed back down. It did not come back down and retest this and then start to go up. So this is the perfect supply zone. This is when you know that you're drawing zones correctly, okay? Now that we've drawn these zones correctly, we want to move to the 30 minute. And I'll go in the 30 minute, we're going to zoom out, okay? We're going to push this over here. We want to draw these zones all the way across, okay? The zones that we already draw. all the way out. And then now that we're on a higher time frame, we want to see more levels to mark up with our horizontal zones. So we see it up here. So what we're going to do is we want to kind of zoom out just a little bit here. And at this point, I see some uh, I see some with action here. Boom, 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 right now, and then drop. So we can draw a bone here. And stretch this all the way out. All right. Then we notice this high point uh, uh, right in here. Okay. So. You see, so now you see that, that price is interacting with the zones pretty clearly. Okay. So now we, we, we've drawn up these zones pretty well. Now, we want to go to the one hour. Do the same exact thing. So we stretch everything out. We don't have to make it perfect. We just want to see clearly what price is doing with these zones. We just want to know. We just want to know. Um, so. so now when we stretch these out here, price is clearly in direct with the zones. You can see it. Price is tested this and went up and then came back and tested this and went up again. Just make it more and more clear, guys. This is how important zones and mark structure is. Seven. Um, then we're going to go up to this next uh, high here. I could have drew a horizontal line, but we just don't need that. So no problem. All right, so now that's what we see so far. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the four hour. <coughs> So then on the four hour, um, <clears throat> this is how far I'm going to go. So on the four hour here, we really, uh, even though these zones are all close together, but it's good to draw these zones because you get an idea of what price is doing. Like when you look on the four hour, you see that price is clearly rejecting this zone that we drew. 
Now, price did go up, but then it closed below. Now, this was a good opportunity for us to get into this buy when it pushed up earlier. That's how I won these two trades here. But of course, I already knew that eventually price was going to be bearish. So even though I knew that price was bullish at the time, but I knew price was overall bearish. So then, now that I see that these zones have been drawn, <coughs> I go to the, uh, the four hour here. And I draw a few more horizontal lines. And this is the next highest one. I'll draw this. And then that's it. And so now, if we want to trade on the four hour, you know, we can clearly look and see that price is starting to, it looks like price might be closing down below. But the thing about it is, you see this big wick that's actually testing this support here. So then in this situation, you would have to wait for another hour or so to see what the next candle is going to do. Is it going to, because this is a doji, so it might be a sign of a reversal. So the next candle might just shoot down and boom. But you'll have to see. But what we're going to do is, since we have these zones drawn and we have an idea, we want to go back to 15 minutes. And then what I do is when I go to the 15 minutes, my goal is, is to figure out what price is going to do. So then, <clears throat> but then at this point, let me do that. But then at this point, we need to ask ourselves, what did price do previously on this same zone? So we see this zone here, we see this zone here. Now, earlier, when price was down here, <clears throat> price sold up a little bit. It makes sense because when we look at previous price here and here, price we tested the same zone. And it made price go all the way up to the next zone and then we test that and then sell. Same thing here, go all the way up, we test and sell. Just made price go all the way down. But then you notice price eventually came back to the head zone, just like it did here. Or even like it did here when it came up and we tested it and went up and then eventually sold again. So it makes sense why. We made money um, on this candle here, okay? Because price ultimately was going to sell up, but now it's starting to sell down again, like price did before, all the way back here. Went up, sold down. So it's clear to say that price is ready to sell. So at that point, price was bullish, but oh, price was really overall bearish, like I said in the beginning. We want to put a trend line here, and it matches up perfectly. And look, price is trending down. So let's do a call and see if we can win this trade. Yeah, it's pushing down. We've got like seven more seconds. Let's see if we can get this. Three, two, wow. Oh, we got. Yeah, well, we're both even, but we almost came close to winning that trade. But you guys get the idea. We both even. Uh, you get very close to getting that. But it's, crazy. but it's still going down. You can see it. Let me change the color of this trend line. All right. So this is why drawing goals is important. That's how we do our top-down analysis on our trading pro team and technology. Um, because it tells the story exactly what price is doing. But that way we know when to enter the market and what to expect. You know, and it looks like it's forming a banker's candle. Um, but we almost won that trade, but you guys get the idea. Uh, that's why I like to practice on demo just to get back on track, but that's how we do it. So now, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> question is, when we look at the past as well, now, if we look at this way here, let's say we draw another, let's say we draw a horizontal line here. Now we see this width is, is push it against support here. Now, when you look at previously, price did respect this support and pushed up. So now <clears throat> we can still say that price is overall bearish and here's why. Because if anything, 
this candle could form another bullish candle and go up and we test resistance here and then rock. The price is still price is still overall uh, bearish because it can form a lower high here. Lower high here, you got a lower low. So you got your next, uh, you know, well, this is kind of like a higher high, and then you know, it's a lower high, and then I mean, lower, low, lower high, lower low. Then another lower high could go up to here. We test this trend line in this zone and then drop, or this candle can just straight drop and sell. But most important thing is that you have an idea of what price might be next. And that's all you can do in order to make good quality trades and decisions on how to trade binary, forex, indices, anything. Okay. Um, what we can do is I'm going to I'm going to pause this recording. We'll we'll wait for another three minutes to see what the next candle does, and that's going to let us know or more likely the decision we could make on the, on the next trade if we were to do one. So be right back. All right, so to give you guys an update. <clears throat> Looks like price might be selling, possibly. You see, we see this doji here. And, and, and normally when you look at the history of dojis, it, it's normally a sign of a possible reversal. It's kind of like when you see there's a doji here, reversal, drop. Um, doji here, the price go up a little bit. Um, this is a you know, doji there, the price go up, reverse go up, the price might be trending down which supports that price is overall bearish. Here. But we'll have to wait for a couple more minutes and see. Um, this is US crude. Yep, but we'll see. But like I mentioned before, if anything, if price decides to go bullish, it's going to probably go up to this resistance here and close down. So, so I mean, if, if candle holds for more than 15 seconds before it gets to this point, then you could put in a call. Possibly, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. But then jump out. But if anything, price won't sell and go down here. That's the history. You see it here. That's the history. Uh, so, um, let me see. Let's wait and see what the next candle does. I'm curious. We are back. The bears and the bulls are still fighting. Still fighting. So we don't know who's going to be the winner yet. If the bulls are the winner, they're going to go all the way up until this point until the bulls come back. If the bears are a winner, then this candle is going to shoot down. So we'll see. Looks like the bulls are starting to win. Looks like they're starting to win. The price is retracing. Bulls, I mean, not the bulls, the bears. They, they, they are fighting hard. They're fighting hard. They are fighting hard. Let's see if this candle gain momentum. Be right back. All right, so I'll put in the putt, but let's see if we can win this one. Let's see. Five, four, three, two, one. Bang. On that trade. But did I tell you guys price was overall bearish? <clears throat> and the bears started to push through. Bulls are trying to fight, but it's getting slaughtered. So, but this is why we do this uh, do this top-down analysis and strategy like we do. And I didn't even turn on my EMAs. The crazy part. But it looks like the bulls are starting to come back a little bit stronger. <clears throat> but if, 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 price, if this price end up going bullish, the highest is going to go is up to the supply zone. Then it's going to then the bears are going to come in and just drop them. But you know, 
the good thing of binary is if you can get yourself in a good candle, whether you want to trim or not, you can give yourself a good buy. But yeah, but this just gives you an idea of what price is doing. But price is going to, is very soon going to drop because the bear the bulls are getting exhausted. They're not really getting that much strength. Now they may gather much strength, like I said, in here, but it's going to drop. The bear's going to go. We're going to bust the uh, bull in the mouth. So <clears throat> I'll go ahead and just end this session. Uh, we, since you guys kind of got the idea of why we do what we do with this type of analysis. All right. See you in the next live session. And thanks for watching.